you laid out the idea of the potential benefits that we could see when we're combining cognitive and physical training. Yes. So what does that mean and what would be those benefits? Yeah, it, it's a very uh, interesting aspect of exercise prescription. And I think it's especially relevant uh, following the explosion and criticism of the brain training industry, where if we look at brain games uh, or apps, there's been a, they, they've really been under fire. There's a couple companies doing it really well uh, in terms of demonstrating far transfer, like carry over to real life. Um, you know, Brain HQ does a pretty good job of doing that. NeuroTracker does a pretty good job of doing that. But then we have this parallel conversation of exercise being good for the brain. So um, there, there's a few reasons why we might want to consider combining exercise with cognitive challenges. It is similar to that skill-based conversation. Um, I think before I get into the how, maybe the why might be helpful. There's been some early research in both animals and humans demonstrating that combined exercise modalities, and I will say there's, there's different ways to combine it. There's getting on an exercise bike for 30 minutes and then sitting down and playing a brain game. That's called sequential combined cognitive physical training. And then there's the simultaneous. The one I'm going to talk about is the simultaneous. The sequential is still beneficial. Like if you wanted to combine, you know, do 30 minutes on the bike and then play a skill uh, or play a sport that's demanding your skills and skill development, that could be great. We'll talk about that. But for the purpose of this conversation, or at least this piece of the conversation, let's talk about simultaneous. So simultaneous would be executing a cognitive and a physical task simultaneously at the same time. This is representative uh, or represented in skill-based modalities. When you are dancing, you are thinking and moving at the same time, right? So people are interested in creating these experiments in a more artificial manner because dance and sports, they're more natural, right? They're, they've been around for all of human existence, most likely, in one form or another. Um, and yes, research has shown beneficial brain health and cognitive outcomes with those modalities for the most part. But when we take artificially created cognitive tasks, uh, like a, a cognitive task on a screen or a enriched environment like an obstacle course for rats, or in humans where we uh, display that cognitive task on a screen or give them uh, a counting task in their head to perform while they're walking, for instance, there seems to be either equivalent or superior cognitive outcomes with those modalities when compared to exercise and brain training alone. So once again, a, se a sequential, uh, well, sorry, a simultaneous execution of these tasks seems to have sometimes a superior cognitive outcome when compared with exercise alone or brain training on an app alone. You're moving your brain and you're moving your body at the same time. Correct. Right? You're pushing your body and you're pushing your brain. Yeah. Right. You're mildly stressing them both out. Yes, right? exactly. You're stressing your body through exercise so in a the, mild way and you're yeah. stressing your brain out to try to figure something out and doing them together could provide some benefits. Right. And, and so some research studies show equivalent outcomes which is like, okay, if it's equivalent, let me just do the easier one, right? But ones that incorporate cognitive outcomes might be more fun or might be more motivating or might be more social. And there's, uh, it might have an enhanced effect on mental health. More research is needed there, but there's some thoughts that that might happen. Uh, there's an evolutionary theory behind this called the adaptive capacity model that was presented by Dr. David Reichlin. Uh, I think maybe three issues ago in Scientific American, he wrote an article with his colleague, uh, Dr. Alexander, that was on the front page about exercise in the brain. Um, and in that last part of the article, the last two or three paragraphs, he's talking about this concept. And he is an evolutionary neurobiologist and presents this adaptive capacity model that cave people, will be gender neutral here, that hunted. Uh, had to use their brain and bodies at the same time. So they weren't running on a treadmill to catch the prey, and they weren't writing an essay to catch the prey. They had to use their brains and the body, their bodies at the same time. So they'd have to go from slow speeds to fast speeds to medium speeds to outlast the, the prey of interest. They had to use their sensory systems, their eyes and their ears. They had to use their spatial navigation systems to uh, navigate the environment. They had to use their executive functioning skills to adapt to where that prey was going, reaction time. So hunting back then was a very cognitively and simultaneously physically demanding uh, activity. And we needed to do it to survive. So a lot of the evolutionary theories about how the brain grew or evolved comes out of nutritional principles. Like, oh, we just started eating more protein or we just started running. 
but not a whole lot of uh, light is shed on. Well, actually, maybe it grew because it was stressed while receiving the growth factors and the blood flow and the electrical activity that comes from exercise while simultaneously getting the direct challenges of cognitive uh, direct to the brain while hunting, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah, and, and not to mention the coordination that you'd need for language development. Right. Right. Language development, communicating with communicating other people, with other people to figure out how you're going to hunt. It, it sounds most similar to sports now. Right. Hunting right now is we we've created technology that makes it easier and probably not as <laughs> physically and cognitively demanding. Not that I'm promoting or um, you know uh, dismissing hunting as a good modality, um, but I think it is very interesting that maybe we evolved this way and our our very human separatist minds separated exercise and intellectual stimulation uh, in our society but maybe it's time to bring that back and i think i you know i got a hint of that with dance dance revolution in my childhood and that's continued to evolve and i think uh more especially with connected fitness and technology this is going to become easier to participate in 